It was a serene evening, the sun beginning its descent behind the hills, casting a warm orange glow over our tranquil neighborhood. I found myself in the kitchen, preparing dinner while the soft hum of the radio enveloped the space in a comforting melody. My son Eric had just returned home from college for the weekend, filling the house with a calm, familiar energy. It was the kind of peacefulness that comes with shared history and love. As I stirred the pot on the stove, I couldn't help but reflect on how quickly Eric had grown. It seemed like just yesterday he was a curious little boy, trailing behind me and peppering me with endless questions about life. Now, at 21, he was no longer that child. He stood before me as a young man, strong, confident, yet at times unknowingly distant. The dynamics between us had shifted with his maturation, a transition that still felt foreign to me. Once dinner was ready, I called for him from the living room. As we settled at the table, I noticed a different intensity in his gaze. It made me pause for a moment, but I brushed it aside, dismissing it as my imagination. Our conversation flowed easily as we discussed his classes, his friends, and how much he missed home. Yet, the way his eyes lingered on mine, longer than usual, stirred something in me that I couldn't quite articulate. After dinner, we decided to watch a movie together. A cherished tradition from before he left for college. The living room felt cozier than ever, the dim lighting and soft cushions creating an inviting atmosphere for a quiet night in. I couldn't remember the last time we had enjoyed such a peaceful evening together. As the film played, I found myself glancing at him more than necessary, admiring how he had grown into himself, no longer the child I had nurtured, but a man with a presence that demanded attention. Then, just as I started to feel a strange unease creeping in, he shifted closer on the couch. Initially, I thought it was innocent. Perhaps he was simply seeking comfort. But when his hand brushed against mine, an electric spark shot through me, intense and startling. I quickly pulled my hand away, startled by the depth of the moment. What's wrong, Mom? He asked, his voice soft and almost concerned. I looked at him, my heart racing, unsure of how to respond. Nothing, sweetie, just tired, I replied, attempting to dismiss the tension that hung in the air. But deep down, I knew something had shifted between us, a line crossed that neither of us had openly acknowledged. The air was thick with unspoken thoughts, and the movie played on, but neither of us was paying attention anymore. I excused myself, claiming I needed to go to bed early. As I walked away, I couldn't shake the feeling that our relationship had changed in that brief moment. That night, as I lay in bed, my mind raced. I knew I had to keep my distance for both our sakes. Yet, I was uncertain about how to navigate this new landscape between us. The next morning, I awoke feeling unsettled, the events of the previous night replaying in my mind. I tried to convince myself it was all in my head. After all, I was his mother, nothing more, nothing less. My love for him was deep, but it was a love that couldn't be misconstrued. I chastised myself for being irrational. By the time I made my way downstairs, Eric was already up, sitting at the kitchen table with a cup of coffee. He greeted me with a smile that suggested everything was as it should be, as if nothing had transpired the night before. Perhaps it really had been nothing, a fleeting moment that I had magnified in my mind. Good morning, I said forcing a smile and trying to sound normal. Morning, Mom, he replied, his voice casual and easy. I was thinking about going for a hike later. Want to join me? A hike? It had been ages since we'd done anything like that together. I hesitated for a moment, unsure if spending more time alone with him was wise, given the undercurrents of the previous evening. But then I reminded myself that it was simply a mother and son spending time together. Nothing wrong with that. Sure, that sounds nice, I said, hoping to embrace the normalcy of our relationship. Later that afternoon, we drove to a nearby trail, a place we had frequented when he was younger. The air was crisp, and the sky was a brilliant blue, providing the perfect backdrop for a rejuvenating hike. For a moment, everything felt right. We walked side by side, discussing nothing in particular, old memories, his plans for the future, the usual small talk. I found myself laughing, feeling more at ease with him, thinking perhaps I had overreacted the night before. However, as we walked further along the trail, there were moments when our conversation faltered, leaving behind a lingering silence that felt heavier than it should. As we reached a clearing that offered a stunning view of the valley below, Eric paused and turned to me, his expression shifting. 
You've always been there for me, Mom, he said, his voice soft yet serious. I don't know what I'd do without you. There was something in the way he spoke, a vulnerability that caught me off guard and made my heart ache. I smiled, attempting to lighten the mood. Well, you won't have to worry about that anytime soon, I joked. I'm not going anywhere, but he didn't laugh. Instead, he took a step closer, his eyes locking onto mine with an intensity that sent my heart racing. No, I mean it, he continued. You've always been more than just my mom. You've been everything. I froze. His words hung in the air, heavy with meaning that I wasn't ready to confront. I searched his face for a sign that he was simply being sentimental, that this was just an innocent moment of affection. But the look in his eyes suggested something deeper, a truth that ignited a flurry of emotions within me. Eric, I whispered, my voice barely audible. You know how much I love you, right? He replied, stepping even closer, as if daring me to acknowledge the unspoken feelings swirling between us. I love you too, more than you realize. My pulse quickened. This wasn't how a mother and son were supposed to communicate or look at each other. My mind screamed at me to step back, to put distance between us, but my body felt frozen in place. I think we should head back, I said, my voice shaky. It's getting late. Before I could turn away, he reached out and gently took my hand. The touch felt innocent enough, yet the way he held on, the way his thumb brushed slowly against my skin, sent a twist of confusion through my stomach that I couldn't ignore. Mom, he said softly, his voice laced with an emotion I couldn't quite name. I, I don't know how to say this, but I've been feeling something, something I shouldn't, and I think you've felt it too. Panic surged through me. I pulled my hand away, taking a step back, my heart pounding in my chest. Eric, stop, I said, my voice trembling. You don't mean that. You're confused. He looked at me, his expression a mix of confusion and hurt. I'm not confused, Mom. I know how I feel. No, I said, shaking my head. This isn't right. You're my son. We can't. I couldn't even finish the sentence. The words felt too dangerous, too heavy to utter. Eric took a deep breath, his face clouded with emotion. I know, I know it's not right, but I can't help how I feel. And I don't think you can either. Tears welled up in my eyes as I struggled to maintain my composure. This wasn't happening. It couldn't be happening. I had to stop this before it went any further, before we crossed a line we could never uncross. I'm your mother, I said, my voice breaking. And I love you, but not like that. I can't. We can't. The words hung between us, thick and suffocating. I could see the pain in his eyes, the way his shoulders slumped in defeat. He nodded slowly, looking down at the ground as if ashamed. I'm sorry, he whispered. I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. I swallowed hard, pushing down the overwhelming mix of emotions swirling inside me. It's okay, I said softly, though I wasn't sure if it really was. Let's just go home. The drive home was suffocatingly quiet. Eric didn't say a word, and neither did I. The weight of what had been said on the trail hung heavily between us, stretching every passing second into an agonizing eternity. I focused on the road, my mind racing as I tried to process what had just occurred. I couldn't believe the words that had come out of his mouth, the feelings he had confessed. It felt as if everything I thought I knew about our relationship had been turned upside down. When we finally pulled into the driveway, Eric muttered something about going to his room. I didn't stop him as he disappeared up the stairs. I collapsed onto the couch, my body trembling with the emotions I had been holding back since that moment on the trail. I didn't know how to make sense of it all. He was my son, my baby boy, but he was no longer a boy, and it was becoming terrifyingly clear that our relationship had taken on a complexity neither of us had expected. I wanted to believe that his feelings were just a phase, something fleeting that would pass with time. But the way he had looked at me, the way his hand had lingered on mine, told me otherwise. A part of me felt guilty, as if I had somehow done something wrong. Maybe I had been too affectionate, too close over the years. But that didn't seem right, did it? Mothers were supposed to love their sons, to nurture them, to be there for them. That's all I had ever done. Yet now, 
Everything felt tainted by the strange tension that had grown between us, and I didn't know how to fix it. I spent the rest of the day avoiding him, keeping myself busy with chores and anything that could distract me from the confusion swirling inside me. By evening, I felt emotionally drained. I didn't want to confront what had happened, but I knew I couldn't avoid it forever. Eric and I couldn't continue pretending everything was fine when it clearly wasn't. That night, after tossing and turning in bed for hours, I heard a soft knock on my door. My heart sank. I knew it was him. Mom, can I come in? Eric's voice was soft, almost hesitant. I hesitated, my mind screaming at me to say no, to create some distance between us. But I couldn't keep avoiding him. I had to face this, no matter how uncomfortable it made me. Come in, I said quietly, sitting up in bed and pulling the covers around me as if they could shield me from the emotional storm that was about to unfold. Eric stepped inside, looking as conflicted and unsure as I felt. He stood at the edge of the room for a moment, not quite knowing what to do with himself. After a few seconds, he sat down on the edge of the bed, keeping his distance. I'm sorry, he said, his voice heavy with regret. I shouldn't have said what I said earlier. I... I don't know what came over me. I nodded slowly, searching for the right words. I know this is confusing, I said, but what happened earlier can't happen again, Eric. We have to be careful. This isn't how things are supposed to be. I know, he whispered, his eyes downcast. But it's so hard, Mom. I don't know why I feel like this. I've tried to push it away, but it just keeps coming back. His words struck a chord deep within me, and I felt an overwhelming sense of sadness for him, for both of us. This wasn't a situation I had ever imagined myself in, but here we were, ensnared in a web of emotions neither of us knew how to untangle. I'm your mother, I said again, my voice gentle but firm. That's all I can ever be. You know that, right? He looked at me, his eyes filled with pain, but he nodded. I know, he said. I just, I don't want to lose you. You're not going to lose me, I assured him, but we have to set boundaries. This is dangerous territory. For a moment, silence enveloped us, the tension from earlier in the day still lingering. Yet there was also an unspoken understanding that things couldn't continue the way they were. We both knew it, even if neither of us wanted to fully acknowledge it. Maybe it's best if you go back to school tomorrow, I suggested gently. I think we both need some space to clear our heads. He nodded slowly, though I could see the sadness in his eyes. Yeah, he said quietly. Maybe you're right. The next morning, I watched as he packed his things, the air between us thick with unresolved emotions. I wanted to hug him, to reassure him that everything would be okay, but I couldn't bring myself to do it, not after everything that had transpired. When he finally left, the house felt emptier than it had in years. I sat on the couch, staring out the window, trying to process everything. I knew we had made the right choice by putting some distance between us, but that didn't make it any easier. The relationship between a mother and son was supposed to be simple, pure, but ours had morphed into something far more complicated, something neither of us knew how to handle. As the days passed, I tried to settle back into my routine, but it wasn't the same. The house felt too quiet without Eric, and I found myself thinking about him more than I should have. I wanted to believe that the distance would help, that it would give us both the space we needed to sort out our feelings. But deep down, I knew that things would never return to how they once were. Something had shifted between us, something we couldn't undo, and I wasn't sure what the future held for us anymore. Thank you for watching and listening to my story. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this.